going here for a history-making night at the Rugby World Cup. Former Blackburn skipper Les Alderless, is it too early to start fangirling? We haven't even seen the Blackburns it's yet. It's not. I mean, I almost forgot that I had a job here today. I was going to jump the fence and join the crowd. That what, was amazing. What did you think, though, Rita Ora? Yeah, she was great. Crazy. She lit the stadium on fire. Now, Les, you're a Bay of Plenty girl, and so too is Blackburn's forward, Luca Connor, who actually took Ursula Carlson back to where it all began. Did you bring your bikinis today? No, I thought we'd skinny dip. Oh, sounds good. Yeah. I got my Borat suit. Oh yeah, nice, yeah. nice. So you grew up on a farm, you've eaten off the land, like fresh produce, free range. That's how I've been brought up. My dad yelling at us to get the sheep in the paddock. Hey, look at <laughs> Eating things straight from the land. Really? I think she's a dog. Part of the family. If you go hunting, and you shoot a pea and they weigh anywhere between, what, 80 and 120 kilos, you carry that out of the bush. How far would you walk with that on your back? Sometimes it can be a while. It's when you're down in the creek and you look up and you see the hills, you go, oh, you have the first carry. <laughs> <laughs> I have the second one on the way to the truck. <laughs> so this bit of lawn is where it all started from, me and my three brothers. Every day after school, playing rugby, ragdolling each other, running inside, crying, one of us. I would play in the primary competition and I'd be the only girl. I just loved the physicality and then played properly at college. You know, when you go for a line out and you yell the numbers out, what does that mean? Pretty much we don't want the opposition knowing what our calls are. So it's like a secret language. Yeah, secret language. Should we have some practice? Let's do it. Show me. You show me how it's done, eh? You scream the numbers and tell me. It's coming for you! <laughs> That's perfect! Oh, I'm gonna lose my position. <laughs> Who's your number one supporter? Would definitely be my parents. She's a real reflection of the whole family and we're behind her 100% and yeah, we're very proud. Biggest credit for like biggest supporters. Cheers. Cheers. I'm in the scrum, what happened? Pretty much at the start, you're almost just having a blimmin' headbutt yeah. with the other girl, trying to get in there. Okay. And then you're gritting your teeth, or like, you hit, you yeah. go, that was soft ass, or your, your mental <laughs> game. Yeah. <laughs> you're a pussy. So you're facing me? I'm not that bad, but other girls Listen, are. you're just saying that because your mum's watching. No. <laughs> I'm an idiot. Yeah, yeah. That is an incredible scrum from this black pack. So you started in 2015. Can you spot a difference that more people tuned in to women's rugby? Pretty much, yeah. like little boys coming up to the games and watching it all and I'm just like so shocked because a couple of years ago you'd go, who's the Blackburns? We're at the final, Rugby World Cup. You're standing there to sing the national anthem. Are we crying or not? Oh, well, if I cried, I feel like my brothers would laugh at me. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> what are you hoping to take away from this World Cup? Is that we put on a massive display of women's rugby. Well, good luck. Thank you. Let me teach you how to do it. Okay? Yeah, you teach me. Luca Connor certainly doesn't seem like she gets any rest at home, but she will need all her strength for the challenge at pass tonight. It is New Zealand taking on Australia. We're just moments away from seeing the Blackburns run out here on home soil at a World Cup for the very first time. Stay with us. Testing, testing, one, two, three, here we go. We've got life, we've got sound, and with that, we've got a stream. And tonight's stream, folks, is the New Zealand Black Ferns versus the Australian Wallaroos. Uh, it's not going to be the first time I've watched either team play, but it's it's going to be it's going to be in my my first three performances that I will have ever seen actually with either of these teams. So it's going to be interesting. Obviously, there's a lot on the line tonight, being that it is the World Cup, um, and you know, being well, at least within the men's game, um, the Rugby World Cup is is 
I believe, as far as viewership's concerned, in the top three events in the entire year. The top three sporting events. In, in, well, not in the entire year, but, um, you know, on the, on the calendar, on the four-year calendar. First of which is, geez, I'm going to say the FIFA World Cup, which is this year as well. Um, following that, the Olympics. And third, but not least, is actually, would you believe, the Rugby World Cup. So that's something. That's something to be proud of, actually. Kia ora and welcome to Sparks 4 and 3 sports coverage of the Rugby World Cup. It's the Black Ferns taking on trans-Tasman rivals Australia for what is really such a special occasion for women's rugby. I'm joined by former Black Ferns captain Les Alder. Les, what are you expecting from this matchup? Look, I think this is going to be a great match, probably the match of the day. We're going to have two hotly contested teams that are going to give each other a run for their money. Ultimately, I think the Black Ferns will take it away, but it's going to be tough. New Zealand have never lost to Australia. Does that change today, Les? I don't think it does, but it's going to be an 80-minute performance for sure. How much will this crowd help the Black Ferns out there tonight? That, this crowd has been unreal all day, and they are going to need them in this game to kick off this World Cup. Les, thank you so much. to please be upstanding and join us in the singing of the national anthem of New Zealand to be performed by Dame Hinawehi Mohi and signed by Emmy Bensley. Here's the anthem. We're getting close. Getting close, folks. Now look. Actually, no. I'll keep quiet. That can wait. Jeez, that'd be emotional. Full, a packed house, packed Eden Park. Looks like there's still a few stragglers. Oh, 
Oh well, regardless. We're back. Sorry about that, guys. Bit of a mis miscommunication, you could say. This is uh, going to be one of the worst starts to a stream I've ever had in my entire life. But, you get over these things. Almost there. We're almost there. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Sometimes it's just easier to, to not even do a stream, but you know, I'm here for it. And I hope you guys are too. I hope you guys are too. Not ideal. Either way, guys. Either way. What I like, I was saying before. Um, look, the Rugby World Cup as a whole is a worldwide event, and there's you know not a lot, not a lot of sports that you can actually say are worldwide. Um, not so much the Women's World Cup, although we do have a packed house here at Eden Park, which is absolutely phenomenal. But um, yeah, as far as the Men's Rugby World Cup, I'm pretty sure it's pretty sure it's up there in like the top three, um, at least most watched sporting events held around the world behind the likes of FIFA World Cup and the Olympics and that's saying something so let's just hope that throughout this the coverage um, even though it wasn't that easy to get it's not on Sky Sports which, which is just wrong in my opinion it's on Spark Sport um, but uh, look all I'm hoping for is that throughout the coverage of the Rugby World Cup we can we can increase the reach of, of the women's game And with that, we begin. Right, we've got women's referees, which is fitting. I like that. Let's see what's up. Okay, so I'm gonna. Oh, jeez, what am I doing here? Um, I am going like this. Look, there we go. Boom! That's what we want. Bit of a scoreboard. If you guys are watching at home, you can sync with me if you like. Um, either way. Let's get going. First set piece. 38 seconds in. What are we going to get? Australia ball. It's not quite like an All Blacks match, I must admit, but it's it's something. Jeez, that's a colourful headgear. I don't mind it. Shani Williams, inside centre. 
Looks like an absolute beast, but she'd be she'd be lucky to be over five foot six, I'd say. Shani Williams. There you go. That's gonna be better for me if I can just have my thing up here. Yeah, odd job. I don't watch many of them, but um, being that it's a rugby world cup, oh look at that, Shani Williams, with a, a a decent run off the bat. Nice forward play by Australia. They go to the right. I'm not going to know any names, but Australia are looking threatening early through Shani Williams bumps off one. Oh, big hit by the number three, by the prop forward for New Zealand. You love to see it. You love to see Oh, and another one. This time by number eight. Australia, out to the left, inside the 22 of, of New Zealand. They're looking threatening. Six phases deep. Middle of the park. The defence is holding strong at this point. And it's a turnover. Fantastic. Black Fern's ball. About 15 metres out, right in the middle of the park. Now, it's going to be interesting, actually, seeing what kind of boot, um, what kind of distance, you know, these uh, these women can get, as far as kicking is concerned. So I guess we'll, we'll see our first sort of inclination here. And it's fairly decent. Fairly decent. About 20 metres. Um, you said you wanted me to follow contact you on some social media service. What was it? Um, why was that? You left to you left to um, jog my memory, bro. But yeah, the the normal ones usually Instagram, my man. Right, three minutes in. If New Zealand lose this, well, basically New Zealand are paying a dollar and two cents. All right, so that's <laughs> that's that's even more of a favourite than your average All Blacks match against a tier three nation. So look, if they don't win. Then, um, then anyone who's bet on Australia is gonna gonna be laughing to the bank. I'll say that much. But uh, look, it's their first sort of taste of the ball thus far. Um, we've got some real speedsters on the wing. I know that much. I don't know too much else though. Right, the big hitter from the from before takes a run, rumbling, bumbling up to the halfway line. New Zealand, one off the ruck, again, another six meters. One off the ruck again. Another couple of metres, hard fought metres, but but good metres. And they're at the 40. Oh no, it's an, and it's a knock-on. It's a New Zealand knock-on, Australia ball. Both teams have been able to defend the first wave of attack from either team, and uh, well, it's looking fairly even at the moment. I think that was it. I'm not really sure. I think you wanted to maybe get to know me a touch, but I simply forgot to do it. Um, how old are you again, man? But I simply forgot to do it. Um, how old are you again, man? Sorry, I have to ask. Can you believe this? No, no, I can't believe this. This is uh, 40,000 people watching. Okay, so it's the biggest crowd for a, a women's match in New Zealand. I was going to say it would be a Guinness World Record um, if it was worldwide, but it's not. And it's actually doubled the highest amount previous. So, um, yeah, that's something. Either way, set piece, Australia ball, comes flying out the back of the scrum. They go to the right, goes to the 10, then to the 13. Make it 15. Oh, we got some pace on the side there. Okay, so both both teams have have pretty pretty speedy wingers, from what I can see thus far. Gee whiz, number 14 for Australia was absolutely flying down the down the wing there. Um, and Australia have received a turnover. Marie says, "Where can I watch the rugby?" Well, you can watch it on Spark Sport, um, at least here in New Zealand. Worldwide? I couldn't say. I couldn't say. Oh, actually, no. Um, Flow Rugby? In the States? But yeah, if you're in New Zealand, it's, it kind of sucks, man. It's um, It was meant to be on... Well, I'd assume it would be on Sky Sport, but it's not. 
it seems Spark Sport has bought the rights to the entire uh, 2021 rug, uh, Women's Rugby World Cup. But not only that, they've got the rights to the cricket, and they've also got the rights to the 2022 uh, Rugby League World Cup. So I had to get a subscription. It was a no-brainer. It had to happen. They twisted my arm. You know, that's what they do. That's what they do. They put a they put a, an entire event on a, on a certain streaming service, and it's like, well, if you want to watch it, you, you kind of have to. You have to sign up. They do have a seven-day free trial, though, but I, I sort of... Nah, I'm not fucking around with that. Right, Australia ball, five metres out. Five metres out, and they're rolling. They're rolling. They're looking... Man, if Australia score first, that's, um, that's going to worry the odds makers, I'll tell you that much. But it's not going to worry me. Right, Australia go one off the ruck again to the left. One metre out, couple of metres out. And they go again. Oh, go into an absolute brick wall. A black brick wall. I'm talking about their, their shirt colours, by the way. Oh, look at that. Great defence. Great goal line defence. But... Okay, so it's a turnover, but they're going back to a, pen a previous um, penalty. They were playing advantage. There was a no arms, a no arms tackle given by an enforcer from the um, the Black Ferns. There, not sure of the name, uh, not even sure of the face, but um, some sort of enforcer went in with with a no arms tackle. And hey, look in the in the modern game, that's just actually we'll have another look at it here. Oh, she went right down below. Yeah, she, she cut him down like a like a lumberjack, I must admit. It worked, but unfortunately it um, it was a penalty. That was like a running back going for a, a block on a on a on a pass rusher, you know, right at the ankles. No arms. Oh, that's not straight. That's not straight. Anyway, Australia in a similar position to what they were a couple of minutes ago. Five metres out. The line out is good. And they're rolling, rumbling, bumbling and stumbling all the way towards the line. They're about four metres out at the moment. The ball's at the back. The ball's at the back. They'll pass it out to the backs. Oh, Shani. Shani Williams, is it? Goes on her own. Two metres out. Australia. Oh, one off the ruck to the number eight. No, she's held just... At just at the line there. And again, Australia are relentless at the moment. Oh, mate. A couple more phases. Fifth phase at the moment. A couple more of these and they'll get in. 13. Oh, out to 13. She's not quite there. Just short on the left-hand side of the field. The halfback picks it up, but she's she's smothered. Oh, big defence by New Zealand. They're back at the five-metre line. They're going to have to defend their little hearts out. Boy. Boy, I wish I knew some names. Maybe by the end of this I will, but... Look, it's all been Australia, really. We've had one... New Zealand's had one phase of play and um, knocked it on after about six or seven phases. So, yeah, great goal line defense. I mean, for the, for Australia not to score there, that's that's a good effort. Really good effort. Eighty four percent um possession too. <laughs> To the Wallaroos. All right. Ten minutes through the game. A scrum. Five meters out. Let's see what they can do. They've had they've had a couple of lineouts from five meters out, but no scrums just yet. So the backs are going to get a great opportunity here. Number eight will take it off the back. Number twelve blows over. Nine out to six. Offloads it within the tackle to number five and sh tries to go on her own. She's a couple of couple of inches short. Not even a couple of meters. Ooh, that's going to be held up, is it? Held up. Great defense by New Zealand. 
Great defense. Now look, all I can hope for is that Australia are emptying their tanks early. You know what I mean? So holes will open up. I mean, a second half, the second half of a game of rugby, doesn't matter what teams are playing, is a totally different story than a first half. So on defense especially, you've really got to just try and you know, absorb whatever, whatever attack um, the opposition's throwing at you. Because at the end of the day, they are you know, playing with a full tank of gas. And, and eventually, that tank slowly but surely does dissipate. And it's whatever team... You know, rugby's a real game of fitness, right? Skills are involved, but fitness is, is key. Um, so yeah, it'd be interesting. Either way, Australia are back on the back on the the, the, um, the attack. Oh, down at the five again. All right, nine out to the three. Couple meters out. New Zealand are having to defend like their lives depend on it, and they are. They don't want to lose at home. First match of the 2021 World Cup. Well, okay, there you go. It would have been a turnover to New Zealand once again, but uh, unfortunately, discipline has let them down once more. And um, it's, a, it's a penalty to Australia for an offside infringement. Five metres out. Harper, can you show the game? No, no, I can't. I'm sorry. I'm watching it on uh, Spark Sport. Spark Sport, yeah. JMCs, what's up? It's a quick tap from Australia. The speedster's got it. Oh, if she can hit him. If she has. Oh, she's in. Oh, mate. I had a feeling she was going to score. She's got the speed, and it looks as if she's got the size and the handoff. What a try. That is something else. Take a bow. Bien Tarita. Now, I saw her steaming down the wing before, chasing a, chasing a kick, but... Oh, mate, what a stiff arm. What a fiend right in the chest of number 15. Fantastic try by Australia. Look at that. Look at that. What a beast. Well done. Anyway, JMCs, where are you tuning in from? Good to see you. Evergreen, Florida State Surgeon General now recommends against the COVID-19 no, vaccines for males aged 18 to 39. Oh, yeah. Well, can't say I'm surprised. Yeah, funny that, isn't it? Funny that. Yeah, look, like I said, it's a game of, um, well, it's a game of two halves, and that's a classic line, and it's the truth. Rugby is a game of two halves, but Australia have certainly begun on top thus far. Oh, I don't know about the kicks. I did mention, you know, about the power. You know, what kind of power, what kind of accuracy we're going to see from the kickers. And, geez, I've got to say that was a letdown. But, 5-0 to Australia. The kicks could be the difference. They could well be the difference. Either way, New Zealand will be kicking off from halfway. Off of the boot of number 9. It's a fairly decent kickoff. About 15 metres into the uh, Australian half. They take it cleanly. And they will go on their first phase of the drive. Towards the 40 metre line. Ooh. Ooh, geez, that was interesting. Number 10 sends it down. Sends it down, uh, I'm not going to say deep, but certainly sent it downfield into, into the New Zealand half. Caught by the fullback. She brings it back to halfway. Oh, Big contact by number six and her opposite. Ooh, here we go. Amy Duplessis. I feel like she's she's in her she might even be on her debut. Oh dec Oh no! This is not looking good. Oh no, Australia's gonna run away try. They're gonna be up at they're gonna be up twelve nil. They're gonna be up twelve. No one's gonna catch her from there. Too bad. Oh jeez, you see that? The Black Ferns uh, back line tried to do something, you know, tricky. Which they would have done a hundred times on the training paddock, but they just got too bunched. They got too far, you know, too far towards the, uh, the sideline there. 
and unfortunately it bounced right up into the left winger for Australia's hands and all she had to do was was jog in basically for the try it's 10 nil it's 10 nil just like that jeez uh odd job yes that's right mate Blake yep that's me that's a Littleton rugby shirt if you're wondering It won't let me type the quote from the report saying the percentage increase of cardiac related issues. Yeah. Yeah, look, I've watched a fair few interviews about people that have, you know, suffered with myocarditis and and things of that nature and you know, your heart breaks for them really. Those of us who had a couple of vaccines and, and didn't get any, you know, long lasting effects or anything we can tell at the moment, um, we got out scot free, you know what I mean? But some didn't. Some weren't so lucky. And I, I understand that, you know. But I did have COVID, and it wasn't nice. And I, you know, have to believe that if I didn't have the vaccine, it might have been that much worse. I mean, don't shoot me. Either way, Australia, 10-0 kick to come, and the kick looks good. 12-0, 17 minutes in, Jesus. Now, that was an unlikely try, but when you've got two absolute speedsters on the wing, it doesn't matter whether it's New Zealand or, or Australia, um... If they get an opportunity, they're going to take it, and they did. They did just that. So, respect to Australia, and let's go again. New Zealand restart. Australia take it cleanly. Forty meters out. Now New Zealand's um, been defending well, but their discipline has been lacking. So let's just see how they. Shani Williams, solid run. She looks like a she looks like a beast out there. Number twelve and number fourteen are my picks thus far for Australia. As far as backs are concerned. Yeah, it's physical in there. Oh, Australia's got an overlap again. Oh, all they had to do was pass it. They had three on one. And that's the thing. They've got number 14 out there on the right. And, uh, geez, I tell you what, you want the ball in her hands. Anyway. Followed you and sent you a message. Too easy, bro. Thanks. And you've got no pictures, no posts, and no followers. <laughs> That's dodgy, mate. How do I know you are who you say you are? Anyway, once again, Australia has the territory, has got the possession. They've got a line out, 22 metres out. Man, if they score again... Doesn't matter what the odd, odds makers had the game at, it's going to be tough for New Zealand to come back. So we'll just have to see what happens here. Oh, it's a short line out. Bit of razzle dazzle. Nine out to ten. Number eight standing out in the back line. That's oh, that's that's a scary sight. Nine goes to the right. They're about 10 metres out at the moment. Jeez, Australia's really come to play. Australia's not really going anywhere at the moment. They're um, six phases in to this, uh, this drive. Seven phases. They're still running with, you know, quite a bit of energy here. They spin it out to the backs. Oh, oh, it's going to be one on one. Oh, 11 on 15. And she almost got past, but not quite. Australia do retain the ball about 10 metres out. They spin it through the backs again. Number six takes it for a run. And for once, New Zealand create the turnover, which they've done two or three times before, but Australia's not playing under advantage. So New Zealand 
defend their line, create the turnover, and get some possession, which is, well, it's good to hear, it's good to see. Right, it hasn't got them. Well, it hasn't got them too far out of their, out from their um, their own line, but uh, we do have the ball. New Zealand set piece, about 30 metres out from your own line. Taken cleanly. Let's see what the let's see what New Zealand can do. This is basically the second time they've had the ball. Oh no, sorry, make it the third time. The first was a knock on. The second was basically an interception for a try. And this is the third, so let's see what these, these girls can do. And they've knocked it on. They've knocked it on. They've knocked it on. It's jittery. The commentators have said it's jittery. Well, that's one word to, to describe it, because it's just, there's no cohesion at the moment. Especially, oh, mate. Is it nerves? Not quite sure. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if they are nervous. Jeez, they're playing in front of a fucking packed home crowd. Now I want to know. I want to know what the odds were for Australia. I knew the New Zealand odds, but I didn't quite see New Zealand versus Australia women's TAB odds. New Zealand were paying a dollar and two. Okay. Um. Oh, eleven bucks. I think eleven dollars. They probably deserve a bit more than that. But yeah. So New Zealand are the heavy favourites, but they're down 12 points to none, and they just simply can't get anything going on offence, on attack. Um, their defence has been solid, but they can't lead in another try here, and Australia are rolling. Oh no, it's another turnover. New Zealand get the turnover. We've got the ball back. Thank God for that. We're going to have to fight for this match. It's not going to be a, it's certainly no pushover. We're going to have to fight. Oh my god, the live odds. Australia's come down from $11 to $2.45. <laughs> and New Zealand have gone up from $1.02 to $1.52. Jeez. Have some faith, would you? Have some faith. Yeah, Ruby Tui, all she's had, all she's been able to do thus far is tackle. She's made six tackles, hasn't missed one. Um, but God, we need to, we need to get the ball in her hands, man. She's an absolute game breaker there, out there on the right wing for New Zealand. Ruby Tui, got to see her run. Right, New Zealand ball at the 40 metre line. Bit of razzle dazzle, bit of a short throw. Goes straight to the front of the line out from 2 to 8 and then back to 2. Oh, come on, girls. Oh no, we've knocked it on again. We've knocked it on again. And Australia are going to play the advantage. No, they won't. When I do, I stick to family and close friends. If you'd like to better verify who I am, you can check my Facebook. Yeah, all good, bro. I'm just happy with you being a mod, to be honest. Um, I don't think we'll need need your services tonight, but um, it's always good to know that you're always, you know, around the traps. Anyway, Australia, oh my gosh, Australia once again have the ball. 
Ooh. As long as we can hold them out, as long as we can... Jeez, if... <sighs> Who knows, actually. Either way, Australian set piece. They will throw the ball in from a, about 15 metres out. They go long to the back of the line out. They take it down cleanly. It is a maul. They are moving in the right direction. And they're still moving. Tell you what, Australia's line out to maul has been really, really effective tonight. The un number eight rips it off the bat, gives it to a number nine who goes to ground. Now, who's going to play halfback? Number three goes in there for a run. Right, it's one off the ruck at the moment for Australia. New Zealand are offside once again. This ref is, is a stickler. She's a stickler for offside, I'll tell you that much. She's not going to let the... Not going to let either team get away with much. Well, it's another penalty to Australia. I wouldn't... Jeez, I'd, I'd love to know the penalty count at the moment. And I will say that... I wouldn't be surprised if they take the three here. What are they going to do? They took a quick tap last time and it produced a try. But they will go for the, the line out. Five metres out once again. I mean, I feel like a... I sound like a broken record at this point. But um, Australia are keeping the pressure on. Right, thrown in at the five. Australia mauling once again. Effectively. Well, they're not going too far. They're still five metres out at this point. And they will feed it to the backs. 9, out to 10, out the back, to 15. 13, sorry, out to 15, out to 14. She scored one before. She's going to score another one. Oh, she's in. Steps back on the... She is gun, bro. She is a gun player. Oh, two tries against New Zealand. How stoked would you be? Oh, my gosh. She's the star of the World Cup thus far. And she's got, she's got pace to burn, bro. She's got the height... She's obviously got the step. Let's see, man. Bang! Back on the inside, mate. Take a bow, seriously. She knows what she's doing. Jeez, man. Oh, I'd love to know the live odds now. Let's have a look. <laughs> oh, fuck! Australia are the favourites, just like that. Australia, oh my god. They go from paying $11 to $1.67. New Zealand go from paying $1.02 to $2.30. Wow fucking we. Now if I if I had full confidence in New Zealand coming back at this point, I might slap a, well actually I'm not a betting man, but I might put some money on, on New Zealand. But man, what do you guys think? Anyone watching this? What, is anyone actually watching the game with me or are you just... Listening to me blabber on. Because this is... This is something else. Jeez, man. Oh, I doubt whether she'll get the distance. She had the accuracy, but not the distance. Unfortunately. Ooh, three tries, one conversion. Bien Teresa, let me look her up. Where's she from? She looks, she looks New Zealander, to be honest, but, I mean, she might be Aboriginal, too. Let's have a look. She's 19, a metre 78, 5 foot 10, 75 kg, plays wing. Well, I know that much. An Australian rugby union seven player. Um, yep. Yeah. 
Well, she's never played for New Zealand, so I'm assuming she was born... Well, if anyone's got some information on that, I'd love to know, but... Um... Fuck, she's going well, though. She does look mouldy, I'm not going to lie. She might not be, though. Anyway, New Zealand have the ball. They're on the attack. Can they get in? Not quite. Down at about five metres out from the line. Oh, jeez. Oh, yeah, they've been given a talking to by someone. Come on. All we need to do is... Oh, look at that run, number one. Oh, my God. The prop forward for New Zealand just absolutely steamrolled a couple of Australians. You love to see it. Come on, girls, get in. Yes, yes. And just like that, they hit back. 13 phases on the trot. Keep the ball in hand, and things happen. Knock it on within four or five phases, and, well, you shoot yourself in the foot. Okay. All right. We're back. And it's close enough to the post that it's a likely kick, which is important. See, bit of running, bit of, bit of front football. That's what we do. Nice carry by the fucking prop, bro. That's, a, that's amazing. What a carry. Love to see that. Yeah, good stuff. Right, we need these points. We need this kick. We really do. It's essential. 10 points down as opposed to 12. And she's got it. She's slotted it. Well done. Well done. Looks like the halfback's our, our designated kicker tonight from the restart and also from the tee. So that's, uh, for any statisticians out there, that's, that's who's kicking the goals. Right, clean take from the Australian kickoff. New Zealand have the ball. First phase. Right, the forwards are doing their jobs. Just one, one off the ruck, one off the ruck, and Australia have been penalised for something. Oh, it's not out. Oh, the kick for touch isn't out by New Zealand. Australia have the ball once again. What can they do with it? Six minutes to go in the first half. Oh, no, New Zealand have stolen it. Thirty-five metres out. Nine to four. Four goes for a nice wee run. Nine. Out to eight. Oh, barnstorming run by number eight there. Nine, out to two. She steps off the right foot, goes back on the inside. Taken down about 25 metres out. Five, six phases for the, for the, the, the Black Ferns at the moment. On the 22 metre line. Now, if we can score here before the end of the first half, that's going to be huge. Huge for the locker room. Huge for the crowd. Huge for the everything. Come on, girls. Let's go. 
Back on the inside. 10 to 12. Dupla C breaks a couple of tackles. 10 metres out. Number two goes off the ruck. Doesn't go anywhere. 10 phases. Oh, it's a turnover. It's a turnover. Number two lost it in the ruck. Unfortunately. And Australia will most likely clear. And they will. But it's not out. New Zealand have the ball. 30 metres out. They spin it. And again. Oh, jeepers creepers. Ruby two, he's got it. Goes to 15. Out to number 11. Oh, she got the pace. Oh, she's not only got the pace, but she's got the strength and she's in. Oh, mate. What a try. The wingers from both teams have stepped up today. I'll tell you that much. Portia Woodman. Now she... I tell you what, that's that's a matchup, right? The Australian number 14 against the New Zealand number 11. Now that is a matchup for the ages. Now where is 14? She's there, she's defending. She's going across. She can't quite get there. She wasn't, she, yeah, she... It was the fullback. It was the fullback that had the job and she just couldn't quite get it done. But... Okay, that's a bit of excitement. Jeez, just like that, New Zealand hit back. Yeah, nice finish by Woodman. Nice finish. Beauty. <laughs> Portia Wonder Woodman. Is her nickname, I'm led to believe. You know, I'm going to put a little bit of commentary in the background for you guys. Not too not too loud, because it's, you know, most probably block this video, actually. No, I probably can't, to be, to be honest. Oh, if she gets that kick from the... Jeez. The kick had the accuracy, but not the distance. No, it was actually number 10 from Australia who, who had the... who was tasked with uh, bringing down Portia Woodman. And look, it doesn't matter what sex you are. Him, her, or transgender, that's going to be a, a hard assignment. Anyway, less than three minutes to go in the half. New Zealand have fought back from 17-0 down to 12-17. Can they, can they take the lead prior to the end of the first half? Now, that would be something else. That would be something else. And with the ball in hand, I'm not going to put it past them. Just got to keep the ball in hand, but they kick it away. A wee chip kick gets um, telegraphed by the Australian backs, and it is Australia ball at halfway. Two minutes to go. Nice run by the. Oh, jeez, she got put on her ass. Australia pass the ball. Out throughout the backs, middle of the field, at the halfway line. And it looks as if it's a New Zealand turnover. No, there's some sort of penalty in the ruck there. Right, she came in from the side to steal the ball. And that's not allowed. Right, there's about a minute to go. It's Australia's ball. They've kicked the ball out. They have the, the line out. About 30 metres out from New Zealand's line. Yeah, the commentary team are talking about how... Oh, no, it's... Oh, it's a forward pass by New, New Zealand. Stole the line out, but unfortunately they've... Um, they've thrown a forward pass. It'll be Australia ball. Sadly.
yeah, by the way, look, if anyone's watching and they want to, you know, help me out and help the channel out, yeah, feel free to leave a like, you know, that'd be amazing. We've got three at the moment. That's a pitiful effort, but, you know, I'm not here for likes. I'm, I'm here to provide <laughs> my live stream and commentary. We'll do my best, at least. Right, who's going to have the last laugh of the first half? And that rhymed. 9 out to 10, out the back to 13. Oh, number 14 comes in off the right wing. Oh, lovely hands by the Wallaroos. Out to number 11. She cuts back on the inside. They're about 30 metres out. Australia ball. They will pass it to the right once again. Oh, number 10 shows and goes. Takes it about 25 metres out. This will be the last play of the game. I assume. Unless a penalty is conceded. Right. Oh, there's a turnover there. Chelsea Bremner, the big number five. The tallest player on the paddock, I believe, from New Zealand. Ripped the ball straight out of the Australian halfback's hands. Now... Do we want to do something with it? Oh, there's a penalty to New Zealand. We've got the ball. We've got the ball. What are we going to do with it? What will we do with it? We're in stoppage time. Do we just want to get it out? Or do we want to chance our arm and go for a run? I'm assuming... I'm assuming they're going to kick it out. Oh, no! Oh, sorry. Tapped it to herself, boots it for the touchline, and that will be the end of the first half. New Zealand fight back. Fight back from the brink, man. Even the TAB had New Zealand as the uh, the underdog at one point there, paying $2.52 to win. But New Zealand have come back late in the, late in the first half um, with two late tries, two good tries, one to the forwards, one to the backs. And it is Australia that lead at half-time, 17 points to 12. So uh, I'm just going to have a wee break and I'll, I'll be back shortly.
Taika Waititi. <laughs> there he is. Oh, so this is the halftime show. My life, Rita Ora. She's going to sing another song. Okay. I thought Rita Ora did the pre match performance. Is this performance here? We have the party at Māori Club. You know what it is. Ladies and gentlemen, boy, yeah. I think everyone in the crowd must have been given a free poi when they got in. I've got some hip hop dancers too. Contemporary, contemporary. Bloody Kapaka. Kapaka meets hip hop. Hey, respect, well done. Bit of Kiwiana there for you. National pastime. Imagine the first moment. The moment spent dreaming. Every drop of sweat, every cut, bruise or bump, every single breath, every laugh and every cheer, every tear. Every note to every challenge. Imagine every moment of hope and every moment of pressure. Imagine everyone around the world watching. This October on Spark Sport. Every moment Boo boo. <laughs> That's a nice name. Um, sorry, what? Where's it on? It's on on um, Spark Sport. If you're in New Zealand, I think if you're overseas, it's al you're, um, Great starts you can watch on Flow Rugby. In the case of but uh, yeah, I'm led to believe Spark Sport has the, the license for the entire World Cup. And not only that, but the uh, the rugby, uh, rugby League World Cup as well. And the cricket. So if you've got Sky Sports, you're shit out of luck, unfortunately. That's, that's where I found myself this morning. So I had to make a drastic decision and sign up to Spark Sport. Small steps to a healthier you. Was AIA Vital. <laughs> they twisted my arm. The fence is up fast here, though. Oh, what a great tackle from Leeming. What's this? Is, is that a phone? Hey, Mr. Patterson. Yeah, I can talk. Uh huh. Okay. Well, um, just push the apps button on the remote. Do you see it now? Hey, too easy. Okay, um, talk soon, eh? See ya. No leaming. Always happy to help. <sighs> right. Until Rita Ora's performance comes on, I'm going to turn off the commentary. Because that might get us blocked. You never know. Mm. YouTube's pretty unpredictable in that respect.
But yeah, what I'd love to know, guys, is can New Zealand come back and win this? I'd say they're, they're of every chance. But the way they played in that first 20 minutes, I pff, thought it was all over. This Tarita, or Tarita, um, must be Māori, but she playing on the playing on the right wing for Australia. She is dynamite, mate. She's a gun. Hey, Liz. hey, look, for anyone watching, where are you tuning in from? Where are you in the world? Are you in New Zealand? GG Gabotsky. Well, it's actually half time at the moment, mate, so you should out of luck either way. But um <laughs> yeah, look, uh this this is not showing the match unfortunately. This is my reaction to it. And if you want to stick around, please do. You're welcome. Oh, we've got a Mexican wave going around Eden Park. That's always a good time. Right, here we go. The second half is underway. Almost. Give it five seconds, no, two seconds, and we're underway. And it's a, it's a lovely restart. Oh, almost um, regathered by New Zealand there. No, it's okay. Australia has got the ball. They go to their first receiver. And she's held on to the ball. It is a turnover to New Zealand. 35 metres out.
All right, we'll kick for the line out. The ball is out, 15 metres out from the Australian line. Right, 15 metres out. New Zealand have a line out. And it is taken clean. We are. It is a maul. Can we do what the Australians have done to us all night? No, it looks as if it's either going to be held up or it's going to be Australia's ball. Tell you what, the Australian forward pack are really, really... Effective at mall time. Nah, it's held up. It's Australia's ball. And they deserve it. They deserve it. I don't know who's I don't know who the who their locking partner is. Oh locking partners are, but they're bloody effective. Bloody effective. Right, Australia ball. Australia scrum. you got to feel bad for these front rowers, eh? Being girls. Going in for a scrum like that? With all the force of a men's scrum? It's crazy. Anyway, Australia ball. The number 12 takes it off the... Takes it as the, uh, the crash ball, the first receiver. And they will kick for the line and they do get it out about 30 32 33 meters out from their own line it'll be new zealand ball New Zealand go wide. Oh, Porsche, Porsche Woodman knocks it on, unfortunately. I uh, can't do much about that. Right, Australia with the scrum, scrum feed. First receiver takes it up towards the 40 metre line. And over it. 50. If they start the second half the way they started the first, I mean, they could be in for, for, for some points here. Now, one of their tries was pure luck. With the uh, the runaway for the left winger there, but we'll see what they can do here. Nice we offload. Australia have the ball, 52 meters, well, a couple meters in uh, All Blacks territory. No, they're driven back through the tackle of number one for New Zealand. They bring it back towards the, the halfway line. They'll spin it out to the backs, out through the to number 10. She takes it for a run. Number 9 goes for a box kick. Looks for some space. Will we counter-attack or will we kick it? 
Oh, we're going to take it for a run. We're going to take it for a run. Number 15. The fullback's through. Up to the 40 metre line. Let's keep it going. Let's keep the momentum. Alright. Oh, she's broken through. The first five goes right. Oh, number seven pops it over the top to number nine. We're within the 22. New Zealand are on the ball. They're on the burst. Spin it. Out to the left. We've got numbers. And again. Four. Oh, out to 11. I want to... Oh, she goes herself. Woodman's in again. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I reckon she should have drawn him past there. But hey, you got to give respect where respect's due, and she scored. And the score is equal. 17 points apiece. New Zealand have officially come back with 17 unanswered points to equal the game. Bruh. She didn't even look. She didn't even look to pass it. Come on, man. Come on, bruh. I know you're the left wing, but you did have someone else out there. But, ah, well. I tell you what, I reckon Woodman just wanted a one-on-one -on -one with with um with uh, the number fourteen for for Australia. She wanted to show show her who's boss. <laughs> now, if we can nail the kick from this far out, that's that's. That's going to be amazing. The girls just don't seem to have the distance from this this type of angle but the accuracy has been good from both teams it's just the distance I mean she'll do bloody well to get this surely about 3 metres in from the touch line about 30 metres back gives it a good nudge oh just short once again the accuracy was good it was just short jeez you can't get much closer than that good effort And actually, she come to think of it, she must be the um, the long range type kicker, whereas the number nine is maybe at short range. Right, Australia kick off. New Zealand take it. It's 17 points all. Almost 10 minutes through the second half. Going to be an interesting final half an hour, I'll tell you that much. Down at the 40. Oh, New Zealand almost throw an interception, but they retain it. And we do have some numbers out to the right, but no. No, it's an Australian knock-on. Jeez. That could be an opportunity uh, gone begging for Australia there. Could have been another interception try. Although the first one wasn't really an interception, but it was a runaway. Um, against the grain, you could say. Against the grain. Either way, Australia's still in this. But like I said in the first half, you know, at the start of the first half, when Australia was running away with it, it is a game of two halves. And it's a game of gas tanks. And... You know, I guess all I can hope for is that New Zealand have, have put in the work to, to make sure that their gas tanks are are um are longer lasting than the Australians. But only time will tell. We've got half an hour to go. That's a long time in rugby. So we'll we'll just have to see. Anyway, New Zealand ball, that that's a good start. When we have the ball in hand, we don't make 
rookie mistakes, um, we're actually looking fairly decent. Our forwards are doing the, the you know, the, the hard yards up front, and our backs are knocking the ball on, really. But, um, hey, we've scored 17 points. Oh, it's a fucking fairly decent scrum by Australia, and they've forced a turnover. The Australian scrum has absolutely demolished the New Zealand scrum there. And they've turned the ball over. Jeez, man. Tough stuff. Doesn't matter whether it's men's. It doesn't matter whether it's the men's game or the women's game. If you're in a scrum, you, you got you got some you got some grit about you. You got some dog about you. And Australia have taken the option of shot at goal. With this kick, Australia could go up twenty points to seventeen. On the back of a really really dominant Australian scrum which they should be super proud of. Super proud of. Anyway, um, look, I, I did ask this before, actually. Look, if anyone wants to let me know where they're tuning in from, that'd be amazing. I'd love to know. Right, 30 metres out, straight in front, and it's looking wide. It's off the post. It's off the post. New Zealand will keep the ball. What can we do with it? What can we do with it? Not much. We take it out to the 22. At least it's not out. Okay, Ruby Tui takes it out to the 22. It's off the post, would you believe? That could be a pivotal moment. Come on, New Zealand. Come on, New Zealand. We've got numbers out to the right. Here we go. Three on two. Here we go. Draw and pass. Oh, goes back on the inside. And again. Is that Sunny Bill or is that bloody someone from the Black Ferns? I'm not sure. I'd love to I'd love to know all their names, but I just don't. Oh, there's trouble here. What's happened? I missed it. Oh, the Australian left wing has been sent off with a yellow card. What's she done? Oh, she's gone for the intercept. She's knocked it down. Let's have a look at this. Ooh. It's hard, man. Those, those calls, those deliberate knock-ons are actually they're pretty harsh, some of them. I mean, I just feel like she was just going in for a tackle and her hand happened to hit the ball. But, I mean, hey, she might have been going for it purposely, but it's hard to say. Oh, there's another card, possibly. There's going to be another card. Put it on the big screen. Here we go. TMO is in, is in control. Let's have a look. That's interesting. The Australian... Ooh, shoulder to the face. Oh, no. And that caused an injury for our number eight, actually. She ran her face straight into the number seven shoulder for, of Australia. Oh, it's a tough one. Fucking hell. Big, oh, big contact. I mean, in, in real time, it, it, it honestly didn't really look like much. And the ref certainly didn't see it. But when you slow things down, I don't know, man. Obviously, when you slow things down, it's it's a different story altogether. I can't see a yellow card in that, personally. What do you guys think? Is it a yellow or... Oh, 
Oh, jeez. Australia's just copped two yellow cards. <laughs> two yellow... Oh, jeez, man. It's going to be 13 on 15 for 10 whole minutes. Hey, Wiz. Well, if New Zealand can't win now, if New Zealand can't put at least a couple of tries on Australia um, during the next 10 minutes, then something's wrong. Oh, we've taken a quick tap. 30 metres out. They go to the left. They go to the left. Number 12 cuts back on the inside. She's down within the 22. 13. Breaks a couple of tackles. Gets down within 10 metres out. New Zealand are rolling. We know we've got the advantage. Literally. 15 to 13. Um, all we need to really do is condense some forwards in. And then spin it out either left or right. And we, we should score. So. Oh, we've knocked it on. We've knocked it on. That wasn't the plan. That wasn't the plan whatsoever. <sighs> so New Zealand is number eight who was the recipient of the yellow card worthy hit to the head by number seven of Australia has gone off for an HIA. But she's been playing for the last fucking, what, two, three minutes? That doesn't make sense. She should have come off uh, originally. Hey, look, if New Zealand... if Jeez, if, if Australia can... I mean, hey, best case scenario, you know, the score's still 17 apiece at the end of, of the 10 minutes. But if Australia can, can only let in one try during this period of time, I feel like they're still in with the chance, that's for sure. I mean, it's 17 all. Like, they've got the ball. Australia just need to milk the clock, as you know, for as long as they can. They need to, they need to use some strategy here. They need their two players back on. I mean, when you've only got 13 players and you've got the ball in hand, what do you do? You've got to keep it, keep it close, you know, keep it close to the ruck. They, they, they can't go wide. They'll just get isolated, and it's not going to, it's not going to bode well at all. As far as New Zealand's concerned, I say go wide at every, every opportunity. But um, Australia will clear from their own line. It's not out. It's caught at the 40. New Zealand are on the counter-attack. They go down the blind side. Ruby tui has got the ball. She cuts back on the inside. Breaks one, breaks two. She's down five metres out. Nine. Out to 19. The replacement for the injured number eight. Off for an HIA. New Zealand, go to the left. And again, Ruby Tui gets stopped short. Two metres out. Surely, go wide, go wide, go wide. No, they keep it close. And... They must be inches short at the moment. Left hand... Oh, no. There we go. Take it off the left-hand side of the ruck and they're in. New Zealand take the lead for the first time in the match. New Zealand take the lead for the first time in the match. And the poise go wild. The poise and the crowd go wild. 22 points to 17. Now, once again, they haven't given the kicker any fucking favours. Um, I don't even know if she'll have the distance. But she'll most likely have the accuracy. Here we go, New Zealand. Here we go. I mean, it was a rough start. It was a rough start. But we have taken the lead. Let's go. Let's go.
Now look, if she can have the... if This is... This is quite a bit further in than her last kick. She had the um, she had the accuracy. She follows through pretty nicely, to be honest. This number 15. Fullback for the Black Ferns. Um, if she gets the accuracy here, I feel like this is over. It's going to be a crucial kick too. She's got the accuracy and it's over! Well done. 24-17. Let's go. Which means that if Australia do score, you know, right out on the sideline, there's no way they're going to get the kick, right? So that that's crucial. You know, every kick in the women's game is crucial. And I've only really realised that in this, this live stream. So that's that's something I've, I've learnt. Um, yeah. I mean, there's got to be like a Francois Stain version in in the um in the women's game, right? Someone who can kick it from 50. But I don't think they're in, I don't think they're playing in this game, unfortunately. Either way, New Zealand spin it, spin it. They go wide. Number 13 breaks the tackle. Out to Ruby Tui. She's got the pace. Breaks one, breaks two. Oh, it's a knock on. It's Australia's ball. Oh, it was looking good. It was looking good. She's frustrated, but she's smiling because she knows that was almost she was almost in there. Great run by the by the uh, the outside centre there. Finds her finds her winger finds finds her right winger. Great pace breaks one, breaks the fullback gets taken down from behind. But I well, I feel like she actually just lost the ball, unfortunately. Oh maybe it was the hit. Who knows? I'll give her the benefit of the doubt. I feel like the hit coming in from behind dislodged the ball, and uh, that was it. Yeah, she knows it, actually. Right, there's five more minutes. Five more minutes for Australia to um, try and defend with 13 women against 15. And I tell you what, it doesn't matter, doesn't matter what game you're in, that's never, that's never going to be easy. Two players down. Five more minutes. What damage, what, you know, what, uh, oh, what's happened here? We've got some cramp. Hopefully New Zealand can do a little bit more damage. Maybe another try would be nice. Um, and then, you know, the game might just be out of grasp. Who knows? Right, it's Australia's scrum on their own 22. Okay, it's New Zealand's penalty. The clock's rolling, which is a good thing for Australia. Right, I reckon it's a, it's a success for Australia if they only let one New Zealand try in throughout this period of being down two players. But uh, New Zealand do have the ball within the 22. Replacement number eight goes for a fucking nice wee run there. They go to the blind side. Nice wee run. Yeah, the number nine gets taken out. We've got uh, the right winger coming in, Ruby Tui. She she takes the the reins of the halfback, and we're looking like we might score here again. As far as well, we as as in New Zealand. Um, let's spin it. Let's go for let's go for a run. Let's spin it out the backs. Come on, do it again. Oh, look at this! Oh, beautiful! Go yourself! Oh no! Oh, Portia Woodman's in for her third. She's got a hat trick. She's got a hat trick.
set up completely and utterly by her inside centre. Well, outside centre, but her inside player. Um, we. Number 13, man. She's, fuck, she's running like an absolute machine, bro. She's got, she's got just as much pace as any of these wingers. Let's have a look at this. Look at this. Get off me. Get off me. Oh, just pops the ball out. Oh, just in the nick of time. Just in the nick of time. Porsche. Porsche Woodman gets a, gets a, a triple. Oh, that's great play. That's amazing. <laughs> wasn't, <laughs> wasn't the most coordinated of passes in the end. I mean, she was looking for the one-handed offload, but yeah, got it out, uh, got it out eventually, and leads to the the New Zealand try, which is fantastic. Oh, look at that. We go up by two tries to, well, two tries, one kick. It could be two converted tries. Once again, this is a very, very similar... I, I just don't think she has the distance. I just I just think it's it's just impossible, unfortunately. You know, she's lining it up for a good amount of time, but I just feel like, even if she's got the accuracy... Prove me wrong, please. Prove me wrong! Oh, she's got it! Oh, my God, I'm going to eat my hat. I should have eat... I, sh I should. I should eat my hat. I really should. She booted that one, though. I saw, I saw a little bit... I, I saw a little bit extra off the tee there. Just a little bit extra. She's got an interesting trajectory. You know, it goes from the inside post to the out. But, uh, hey, respect, man. What a kick. That's at least from 40 metres out. At least. If not, you know, 40... If not 42, 43. Amazing. Let's go, New Zealand. Come on, let's hammer it home. Oh, another inside back in the... Jesus. Bit of razzle-dazzle around the ruck here. Chip kick over the top, looking for... Number 12, who was hanging out in the right wing there. Right, Australia try and clear it from inside their own 22, and it's out around about 32, 33 metres out. Well, I'd say 31 metres out from their own line. New Zealand ball. And their two Simbind players are coming back on the field, I assume? Yes, right. So there's, so, Okay, so there's 15 against 15. All right, that's something. That's what we want. I mean, at the end of the day, as fans of the game, that's what we want. We don't want 13 against 15. That's ridiculous. But New Zealand did really take advantage of that time. They scored two tries. Okay, New Zealand overthrow it. Australia's got the ball. How can they respond? They need at least three tries. Oh, here's... Man, I just don't see them happening. I just don't see it happening. Jimmy says cheers for the commentary. Oh, shit. How long you been here, man? I didn't think anyone was bloody watching. <laughs> oh, I appreciate the comment, man. I'm doing my best. I'm doing my best. I haven't seen many of these players ever in my entire life, but I'm enjoying it. You know, New Zealand has... Bas New Zealand scored 31 unanswered points, guys. They've come back from 17-0 down. Whew. It's a good result. Thus far. 15 minutes is a long time in rugby, and that's how much we've got left. And New Zealand lose their second line-out throw in a row. Who is... Oh, gee! Okay, no! Oh my god, I was gonna I was gonna say who is that? Who is that running from Australia? And lo and behold, she runs into a New Zealand player who just strips the ball right out of her hands. And I thought she was running like an absolute beast. But lo and behold, you know, ball security, mate. Ball security. Right. Oh, New Zealand go for the old chip kick. And it goes long. It's going to be a twenty two meter restart to Australia, unless the rules change. 
Uh, Lupe says, could you show the match, please? I just can't, man. I just can't. I'm really sorry. I'm really sorry. All I can show is that little sliver. Sliver. Um, up top. Right, the 22 meter restart has gone straight to Ruby Tui's hands. 35 meters out, New Zealand ball. Come on, girls. Come on. See, the passes are sticking. The passes that were dropped earlier in the first half are just sticking now. Here we go, here we go. Spy oh, fire it again. Go, son! When I say go, son, but I mean really go, go, girl. This is new for me. Right, New Zealand are deep in, deep in Australia's half here. Inside the 22, about 10 metres out. Six phases. Oh, and the halfback's thrown it into a Wallabies player. And it's a New Zealand penalty. 15 metres out. 15 in from the sideline. At this stage, I would assume they're going to kick for touch. If it was a closer game, they might even take the kick at goal. But we haven't seen a lot of that. Website you're using. Um, I'm using Spark Sport. So Spark Sport is a New Zealand based um, company. And they have the streaming rights to all of the uh, Women's World Cup games. So if you don't have Spark Sport and you're in New Zealand, you're shit out of luck. But I'm pretty sure you can get a seven-day free trial. Um, and if you do have broadband through Spark, you might actually be eligible for a free six-month trial with Spark Sport, which is what I'm eligible for. So that's what I'm watching on. Other than that, you know, there's free streaming services out there. I mean, if you go to Crack Streams, write in Crack Streams Rugby Union on Google, you'll find something. You're just going to get through about 10 ads. Then you'll be sweet. Right. New Zealand line out. Deep in the Australia's, Australian's half. Actually, it's on the five metre line. Call it five and a half. It's a clean take. Oh, we've got a trick play here. Oh, and it's knocked on. It's knocked on by number 18 for New Zealand. Five metres out from the Australians line. They're playing advantage. They're playing advantage. Is there any point? Yeah, huge change from first half, man. Huge change. I mean... As far as scoring is concerned, yeah. Uh, Australia came out that first 20 minutes, man. But New Zealand let themselves down. I mean, they, they dropped the ball at, at bad times. You know, they, they, they committed offside defensive penalties within their own 22, and, and it led to Australia scoring points. But I will say that the most impressive player on the, on the field, the entire field, was, is actually from Australia. Number 14. She is fantastic. Right, New Zealand has brought on their replacement halfback, which is a pretty crucial position, so let's ho hope she uh, goes all right. Oh, New Zealand are rolling, bumbling, rumbling, and stumbling all the way to the try line, hopefully. Eight metres out. They take it off the ruck to the left. Seven metres out. They'll take it off the ruck to the left again with some help from behind. Five metres out. They go to the right. They spin it through the backs. They've got the advantage. And Ruby Tui is in for her first. What a result. Look at that. 36-17, just like 36 unanswered points. I mean, Australia's got to feel disappointed. They've got to feel disappointed. I feel disappointed for them. 
17 nil up against the Black Ferns. At one stage, the TAB had Australia as a favourite. At one stage throughout this game in the first half, man, far out. What a turnaround. Well done. They had to dig deep. It wasn't an easy game, man. No way. And it's not over. Hey, look, I'm not saying it's all over, but still. What a way to fight back. Now, if she can get this kick. Okay, we've got a replacement fullback. Sorry, replacement inside back. She might have a, a bit more distance than the the other kicker. Now, if she can get this, that's something else. The angle's not not nice at all and the oh the distance the distance might have been there but the accuracy was was off unfortunately so the score remains 36 17 and that means that australia really do have to score literally three geez let me do some quick maths here three converted tries at the very least it's not going to happen I mean, one of their first half tries was, you know, pretty, you know, fortuitous, you could say, with the left winger picking up that, that loose ball and running in for a, a 60 metre runaway try. But I mean, here she is with the ball again. And she's, oh, can she get, geez. Yeah, she just looks undersized against a, a girl like, like uh, Ruby Tui. I tell you what, just undersized. Right, let's see what Australia can do with the ball in hand. Probably about 20 me 28 metres out from the New Zealand try line. Australia ball. Set piece. The scrum looks good. They'll fire it out to the left. They'll give it to Tarita as a first receiver, but she's driven backwards. She is their most dangerous runner, though. I'll give her that. All right, Australia, 22 metres out. They go to the right, and again, and again. Cut back on the inside, middle of the field, 25 metres out, Australia ball. They go to the right. It's three on two. Oh, she gets through, but there's, there's, no, there's no one there. There's no one there to blow over. Oh, it's stolen by New Zealand. That's kicked through and it's out. Gee whiz, look at that. Massive um, quick lineup by Australia there. I mean, they know... Well, they know that they need to score points. There's no, there's no two ways ab about it. They don't want to waste time. But there's only eight minutes to score three converted tries. I'm not sure if it's going to happen, and it's certainly not going to happen like that. Australia have, co have coughed it up. New Zealand have the ball. And it's a New Zealand penalty at the 40 metre line in their own half. Nukes or Nucks. Chimes in, says good defence. Yeah, for sure. Yep, they got tested. They got tested real bad in the first 20 odd minutes. And honestly, there were there was a, a few, you know a few goal line tackles, a few like try saving tackles. One was held up. They did let in 17 points, but they've come back with a vengeance. And yeah, the defence has been solid. Right, New Zealand kick for touch. They are. A 20 meter gain from that kick, and they're 40 meters out from the Australian line with a line out. It's taken. They throw it out to the backs. Oh, 
on the 40 meter line. They go to the right hand side. Oh, gee whiz. Look at that. Oh, Ruby 2. Look at this. Oh, 1 on 1. 1 on 1. 1 on 1. What's going to happen? Oh, too much pace. Too much pace. Does that mean both New Zealand wingers have a hat trick? She's through. She scored it. But how many has she scored? I'm gonna, I count three. Mate, she's dynamite. Oh, two. Sorry. Okay. Three to Portia Woodman. Two to Ruby Tui. Couple to the forwards. Look at that inside ball from number 10. Oh, beautiful stiff arm. Just backs herself. Backs herself. Goes for the line. Gets in. Fantastic. You talk about good defense. Mate, we've... we've yeah. Whew. Lovely. No, it wasn't Woodman. This was Tui on the other side of the field. But both backs, both uh, both wingers have been electric. Yep. Off of the back of, you know, the number 10, number 13. Um, but unfortunately, in that first 20 minutes, they were dropping balls. You know, dropping sitters. And that just unfortunately gave all the momentum to the uh, the Australians but not in the second half and that conversion does have the accuracy but not the distance unfortunately so 41 points to 17 five minutes to go it's looking good for the the uh, the black ferns here it's, looking, it's basically looking as good as it ever has. Um, and I feel like this is... Jeez, we might even score 50 points. Wouldn't that be good? Australia's got the ball. Oh, it's a turnover for New Zealand. We've got the ball back. Let's go. And it's a penalty. Four minutes to go. Right, New Zealand have the line up. And there's a second ball on the field. Kick that off. Thirty five metres out from the Australian line. It's a clean take. We'll pass it out to the backs. Out to the ten. Out to the twelve. Well, make that the eight. Or the replacement seven probably. <laughs> Sorry, I'm doing this by numbers. I don't know any names, man. Right, it's Australia's ball. They try and do a little chip chip kick through. Uh, New Zealand have other ideas. And it's going to be a counter-attack opportunity here. Down the left-hand side. Oh, can we keep it in hand? No, we can't. It's out. The ball is thrown out. Off of a... Uh, um, rogue pass, you could say, from number 10. Three minutes to go. Right, Ruby Tui, one of the one of the stars of the show, has been taken off. She's been replaced by Um, let's have a look. No, they're not going to show us.
Right, it's going to be a short line out. Five, five women aside. Two minutes to go. New Zealand have the throw. It's taken cleanly. Just inside the 40 now. Okay, there's a penalty advantage for something uh, that Australia's done. Right, so let's 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 uh, let's take the advantage and let's do something with it. No, we'll knock it on. It's going to be brought back to the advantage. Right, we're going to take a quick tap. Middle of the field, 40 metres out. New Zealand ball. They go to the right. They go... Oh! Big tackle by the Australian number 22. Oh, mate! It's a legal tackle, one, and it forced a, a, a knock-on, number two. That's a, it's probably the best tackle I've seen thus far. Girl on girl, too. I mean, geez. Something else, isn't it? It's just... Tarita keeps it alive, offloads to number six, gets there to, to drive over Australia. Want to get, They want to get something out of this. They want to get a consolation effort, at least. If not a try, at least an effort. And they'll get it through number 22. She puts on the big hat. She breaks, breaks the field wide open. Puts on the goose step. Looks for, looks for support. No one's with her. No one's with her. The gas tanks are empty. Tell you what. Comes onto the field, puts in the biggest hit of the game, and probably makes the most metres in a single run in the entire game within the space of about a minute. Number 22 for Australia, take a bow. Your team might lose, but you've at least given them something to cheer about. No, right, we've got the big number five for New Zealand, the tallest player on the paddock, rumblings down the field, like big Brodie Retallick. But she's only, a, um, she looks like, she looks huge, to be honest, compared to the other girls, but she's only a metre 80. She's only six foot tall. Crazy, isn't it? Either way, that's the game. That's the game. The Huda has has uh, been blown. Um, we've got the ball. What do we do? Oh, they're gonna they're gonna kick it out, and that's it. The game's over. Just like that. New Zealand have won with a score of 41 to 17. They were down 17 points to nothing after 28 minutes. They brought it back. 41 unanswered points. Well done to the New Zealand Black Ferns. Respect. You've done the country proud. You've done the 40,000 in attendance proud, which doubles. Well, at 40,000, that is officially New Zealand rugby's highest attendance at a women's rugby game. And the previous highest attendance was 20,000. So that's just, that's that's how spectacular this occasion was. And hey, we've done it. We got through in the end. The game is in the books. And my friends, I am going to leave you. Thank you for watching. And I'll be here for the next Rugby World Cup game. I'm not sure what it is. Actually, the next stream on this channel will be the New Zealand Kiwis playing the Leeds Rhinos, which is kicking off in about nine hours. So if you're interested in that, subscribe. If not, I'll see you there. Cheers, guys, and...